Greetings to all physics enthusiasts, fans of physical experiments, and astronomy lovers, as today we will be discussing earthly and heavenly matters of great significance and fascination. And let's have a conversation about the question that, in all likelihood, astronomy initiates its journey with. What is the reason for the existence of seasons? Or, to state it in a more concise manner, why is the temperature high during summer and low during winter? And it appears this is a subject that is examined in school during classes of natural science, physical geography, and astronomy. However, it turns out that in every single survey conducted, exactly half of the participants consistently give an incorrect answer to this particular question. Even at the physics department, 30% of students indicate that it is warmer in summer because the Earth is closer to the sun during the summer months, according to their perception. However, this is a resolute falsehood because Earth is closest to the sun at the beginning of January. In perihelion, it approaches the sun at 147 million kilometers, while at the beginning of July in aphelion, it moves away at 152 million kilometers. A total of 152 million kilometers. And it's clear that these distances differ not too much, only by 3.5%. Therefore, the brightness of the sun during the month of January is 7% higher compared to the brightness in July, which is a significant difference. The sun is at its brightest during the winter season. However, despite this, the weather remains cold throughout the winter months. And by the way, individuals who respond incorrectly could pause and contemplate, even if they don't possess knowledge of such intricacies regarding distance. And to tell yourself, well, when it's winter in the North Hemisphere, it's summer in the South Hemisphere, and when it's summer for us, it's winter for them, vice versa. And it is evident that this cannot be attributed to the distance between Earth and the Sun in any manner whatsoever. The reason here lies in something else. By the way, the correct answer to this question was already known to the ancients. And they responded to this question as follows in the manner that has been passed down through generations. During the winter season it is cold, and during the summer season it is warm because in winter the sun rises low above the horizon, while in summer it rises high. Well, let's consider Novosibirsk as an example. Our city is situated at a latitude of approximately 55 degrees. This signifies that the polar star is positioned at an elevation of 55 degrees above the horizon, indicating its prominent and prominent position in the night sky. And the sun ascends to an extra 90 degrees during the autumn and spring equinoxes. That is, it reaches a higher point in the sky compared to other times of the year. At 35 degrees above horizon, at 35 degrees above, at 35 degrees, In summer, it rises at 23.5 to 35 degrees, result 58.5. In winter, on the contrary, subtract 23.5 from 35 and you will get 11.5 degrees. And in winter, on the contrary, subtract 23.5 from 35 and you will get 11.5 degrees. That is the disparity in the sun's midday ascents above the horizon during the summer and winter seasons of the year. Well, it is apparent that it is of considerable importance. Let us observe what this leads to in relation to the illumination of the surface of the Earth. Let's take into consideration a beam of light rays emanating from the sun with a width of A falling onto Earth at different angles during the summer and winter seasons when the sun's position in the sky varies. During the summer season, this beam illuminates a relatively narrow strip, whereas in winter it illuminates a wide one. The widths of the stripes are related as signs, while the illuminations are related as inverse signs. And correspondingly, during the summer season, the Earth's surface at midday is illuminated in Novosibirsk 4.3 times more effectively compared to the illumination during the winter season. And it is evident that summer will be warm and winter will be cold. However, when it comes to explaining the mechanisms and reasons behind the transition between the four seasons, we and the ancient Greeks would have approached it in a significantly distinct manner. And a Greek astronomer would create a diagram similar to this. This, the astronomer would explain, represents Earth, and this represents a large circle, which signifies the celestial sphere encompassing Earth. In reality, this is the sky that is visible to us. Now I will sketch the horizon. The things that are above the horizon we observe in the sky, and the things that are below the horizon line we cannot see, as they are obstructed by the Earth. 
The line that follows is the celestial axis, which is the axis around which the celestial sphere rotates. However, its northern end points towards the pole star, serving as a guiding reference in the night sky. This circular shape is positioned at a 90 degree angle in relation to the axis of the Earth. This is the celestial equator. It is an imaginary circle that divides the celestial sphere into the northern and southern hemispheres, creating distinct regions in the sky. And now we come to the most significant and vital part. The celestial sphere rotates around an axis and completes a single rotation in one sidereal day, which is the time it takes for all the stars to return to their original positions in the sky. And this is the yellow inclined circle on the celestial sphere. This is the ecliptic, the path of the sun among the stars that it follows as it travels throughout the course of a year. Now I'm going to draw two additional circles. These circles represent the tropics. Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. And the sun, in its yearly trajectory among the stars along the ecliptic, ascends to the Tropic of Cancer during the summer and descends to the Tropic of Capricorn during the winter. To show the daytime position of the sun in winter, it's best to draw it like this, rotating the sphere halfway. And we see how the sun rises high above the horizon, low above the horizon, and during the equinoxes it is located on the equator and rises accordingly to a mid-position. And, in general, this diagram may be quite unfamiliar to many of you, but it was studied by students in ancient Greece in their astronomy classes, and each and every student had the ability to draw it with precision and accuracy. And for us, obviously, it is easier because we immediately portray the Sun, the orbit of the Earth, and the Earth itself, whose axis is not perpendicular to the plane of its orbit, but inclined and forms an angle of 23.5 degrees, with the normal to this plane, creating an elliptical path around the central body. And here the Earth is portrayed in four different positions. It is depicted when it is tilted with the northern hemisphere facing towards the sun during different seasons. The north is well lit, while the south is less illuminated. It's currently summer in the north and winter in the south. And when the Earth is on the opposite side of its orbit, everything happens the other way around. It is tilted towards the sun. It is currently summer in the southern hemisphere and winter in the northern hemisphere. And what about autumn and spring? In both hemispheres, they are the transitional periods between the warmer summer and the colder winter. And currently, both hemispheres are receiving an equal amount of illumination due to the alignment of the earth and the sun. But all of these were just basic school truths, and I want something more serious, so I will now ask our final question, and it will be this. You are aware it would seem that the region with the highest temperature should be situated on the equator, considering its proximity to the sun and the directness of the sun's rays. However, when examining the geographical placement of deserts on the Earth's surface, it becomes apparent that they are not situated along the equator, but rather in the tropical regions. The Tropic of Cancer is situated in the Sahara Desert, as well as the expansive deserts of Asia. On the other hand, the Tropic of Capricorn can be found in the desert regions of Australia, the Namib Desert in Africa, or even the Atacama Desert in South America. The inquiry is, why is it not as scorching on the equator? Why is the climate there more temperate than in the tropics? Please share your thoughts on this matter in the comments section of this YouTube video.